This is a recording of our playbook. Download the playbook, configuration spreadsheet, and ABA Lab environment from our website. Welcome to our whiteboard drawing, Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, Dial Plan Build Overview. In this drawing, we provide an overview of the Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build. How can you maximize the return on investment of your Cisco collaboration solution? Do you have a BE6000, BE7000, or other solution? Are you using cool standard licenses? We'll show you how using Enterprise 20. The Cisco Vision, any device, any content, anywhere. Our enterprise has the same vision. We'd be crazy not to. Users can have many devices. Devices include smartphones, tablets, laptops and workstations, as well as phones of various types, from simple to HD video enabled. Users will have unified messaging, a single mailbox for all kinds of messages with web as well as TUI and email access. Users will have IM and presence. Users work at many locations and will be mobile. Users will have a simple, intuitive client that works anywhere on any device. Chabber. We start with Cisco's cool standard licenses, Cisco's most popular. We deploy these Cisco collaboration applications to get the most from our cool standard licenses. Cisco Unified Communications Manager, Cisco Unity Connection, Cisco IM and Presence. We also need a customer care solution that leverages our collaboration environment, so we will also deploy Unified Contact Center Express. We want to exploit all these great CUCM features that come with cool standard licenses. A grizzled old PBX veteran gave us good advice a long time ago. Only give users the features they need. Don't give them anything else. Start simple, get it working, add features later. So many features, so many capabilities. What should we do? The North American numbering plan is ancient. It was developed in the 1940s. For perspective, around the same time in 1946, the first general purpose electronic computer was developed, the U.S. Army's Ballistic Research Laboratory's ENIAC. In 1981, legend has it that Bill Gates said, 640K ought to be enough for anybody. The NANP was in its fourth decade at that time, and that was 33 years ago. We want the fastest path to the best solution. What should we do? Always start with the Cisco Unified Communications Manager Dial Plan. The dial plan is the heart of any telephony system. You need to make it easy to communicate with the people with whom you need to collaborate. If you have a solid dial plan in place, understandable, scalable, manageable, and facilitating the deployment of the features you want, then everything else will fall into place. Get your dial plan right. It's all about collaboration. The CUCM is a collaboration product. The whole point is to facilitate collaboration. Collaboration is working with others to achieve shared goals. You collaborate within your enterprise, you collaborate with your enterprise's partners, and you collaborate with your enterprise's customers. Giving your users dial tone is not the same thing as facilitating collaboration. Our objective is to build the best possible dial plan to facilitate collaboration within our enterprise and between our enterprise and our partners and customers. Not give our users dial tone as fast as possible with the minimum configuration and smallest ongoing administration. What are your objectives?
What is the best possible dial plan? What does it look like? What features get deployed? How long does it take to deploy? Is it complex and difficult to manage? What do users need to know? We use Enterprise 20 to investigate. Enterprise 20 has 10 sites across Canada. We need to route calls out local gateways at each site. Dialing is different at different sites. Users roam between sites. Users have multiple devices, including devices outside the enterprise. We want to maximize reachability, and we need a dial plan our users can understand. Other collaboration whiteboard project modules show you how to install and prepare your BE6000, BE7000, or other C-Series server for UC on UCS, Day 1 UC on C-Series, C-Series Server and Hypervisor Deployment for Cisco Collaboration Applications, and how to install Cisco Collaboration Applications in Highly Available Clusters, Day 1 UC on C-Series, Installation Day. Now we're focused on the Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build. These drawings and playbooks take us from the end of installation day to the point where the phone, user, and feature administration team can take over and where we can integrate with other applications. We develop objectives and requirements for the best possible dial plan for Enterprise 20, and we whiteboard a solution. We provide comprehensive configuration information, including configuration playbooks with step-by-step -step instructions, and configuration spreadsheets containing all of the configuration information for the solution. We include a test suite for the solution. We made the solution available for browsing on the internet. We produced end user training for the solution. If we can't explain how our collaboration solution works, we're in big trouble. We created a lab to test the solution and to experiment with options. You can download and build the lab yourself. This playbook describes the Enterprise 20 dial plan build. These topics are discussed. Overview, whiteboard the solution, end user training, comprehensive configuration and testing, see the solution on the internet, and the ABA lab environment. This playbook has two parts containing these topics, overview and whiteboard solution, and end user training, comprehensive configuration information, online solution, and the ABA lab environment. First, we will whiteboard the solution. The Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build Whiteboard Solution is available for free on our website. The best and most important tools for dial plan design are pencil, paper, and whiteboard. His advanced dial plan design presentations are great. We'll be there in San Diego. We whiteboard the solution to clarify our objectives and requirements, develop a dial plan that meets these objectives and requirements. We need a complete and comprehensive solution, internal dialing, including site codes and directory numbers, external dialing, including class of service to restrict who can call where, call forwarding, and mobility. These drawings make up the whiteboard solution. We discuss the Cisco validated designs. We talk about this one, the Cisco BE6000 CVD, and this one, the telephony using Cisco UCM CVD. We are using a modified solution from here. These were available when we developed this drawing. We look at the SRNDs. We need objectives for our collaboration project. What are we trying to accomplish? We need requirements for our collaboration project. 
what needs to be done to meet our objectives. How can you have a project without objectives and requirements? Our objective is to facilitate collaboration. Hooray! We can facilitate collaboration by making it as quick and easy as possible for users to contact the people they need to contact, others to contact them, and users to get the information they need from other users in the enterprise and from customers and partners. We are more likely to succeed if we make it easy for users to understand how things work. We want to maximize the chance of calls being successful. Enterprise 20 has specific requirements for our internal dial plan. We are moving existing sites to our Cisco Collaboration solution. Many sites are using site abbreviated dialing, dialing by extension. Some sites have five digit extensions and some sites have four digit extensions. Sites have their own auto attendance allowing transfers by extensions. Customers and partners use these and are familiar with their operation. Forcing everyone to change the way they dial when they move to our collaboration solution is not facilitating collaboration. We don't want to change the way people dial without a really good reason. If we don't have to, why should we? And we don't have to. It's easy to meet this requirement with Cisco Collaboration. We'll use the UC9.x SRND variable length on net dial plan. For the UC9.x SRND variable length on net dial plan, this is the best story. Users have just one number, and there are three ways to dial that number. External, outside callers, dial the whole number. Internal callers dial using 8 instead of the area code. Within the same site, just dial the extension. Outside callers will know whether the one is required or not, so we don't need to worry about that. Everyone can easily understand this. There is no better outcome for an internal dial plan using site codes. We discuss internal dialing in background drawings. Internal dial plan part one, Configuring Extensions on Lines Internal Dial Plan Part 2 Problems with Configuring Extensions on Lines Site Codes and Patterns provides a solution for internal dialing How to assign site codes and directory numbers Partitions, calling search spaces and translation patterns for internal dialing We want to make it easy for users to understand how to dial. Calling external numbers from our Cisco phones is just like calling from any other phone except use a 9. We want to make sure users can dial all the numbers they need to be able to dial. We facilitate collaboration by making sure everyone can communicate with everyone they need to. We don't want post-dial delay. Slow dialing doesn't facilitate anything. Calling external numbers from your Cisco phone is just like calling from any other phone, except use a 9. Users can call all different kinds of numbers. Emergency, service, local 7-digit, local 10-digit, long distance, toll-free, and international. It's about collaboration. Three-digit service codes provide our users, customers, and partners with access to information. In many cities, 311 provides access to information for the city. This is true in Montreal, Toronto, and other Enterprise 20 sites. In many cities, 511 provides access to traveler information such as construction and road closures. And of course, 411 provides access to directory information. Not providing access to this information is crazy talk. It's about collaboration. We have sites where users still have seven-digit dialing for external numbers. In many cities, seven-digit numbers provide access to services. How could we not support dialing 310 bell? 
It's easy to support dialing these numbers with post dial delay, and we'll show you how to remove that delay if you want. Not allowing seven digit dialing? That's just silly. If you don't do anything, then users will not be able to one click dial from call lists. We hate edit dial and so do our users. They complain about this. Avoiding edit dial is a requirement for our dial plan build. Our users can return any of these calls by clicking on the number in the missed call list. We discuss external dialing in background drawings, basics of CUCM route patterns for the North American numbering plan, dial plan hierarchy, and class of control, partitions and calling search spaces. Patterns for Delayed 7-Digit Dialing provides a discussion of patterns and the dial plan hierarchy. We enhance the route patterns provided in the Cisco validated designs to support overlapping 7 and 10-digit dialing. We look at a dial plan hierarchy using local route groups and an unrestricted calling search space. Our incoming call handling drawing discusses incoming call routing, the easiest way to route incoming calls, and incoming calling party settings. How to avoid edit dial. We want to prevent toll fraud and reduce costs wherever possible. We need to control who can call where. Not every line can call long distance and international numbers. Our dial plan must restrict dialing to high risk numbers and support TEHO where possible. Our dial plan needs to support the following classes of service. Internal, local, including toll free, long distance, minus high risk, international, minus high risk, unrestricted, every dialable number, and no 911 versions of the above. This is a requirement for the Enterprise 20 dial plan build. It's about collaboration. Of course we support toll-free dialing. Any line that can call an external number can also call toll-free numbers. You can join a WebEx audio conference. Our customers and partners can call their travel desks and so on. Restricting calls to WebEx negates the whole idea of collaboration. How about, for call forward all, we don't want someone to accidentally configure 911 as a call forward all destination. 911 calls shouldn't come out of our voicemail ports. We'll be proactive and prevent this. Some roaming devices, such as Cisco IP Communicator, should not be able to dial 911. Gateways and trunks with incoming calls for Tejo. For example, a trunk between a cluster in San Diego and one in Winnipeg. Be proactive and respect 911. It's easy with Cisco collaboration. Call forwarding helps callers reach you by forwarding calls that would otherwise fail to numbers where you might answer. It's easier to collaborate when you can reach the people with whom you need to collaborate. The CUCM is a collaboration product. The whole point is to facilitate collaboration one way to facilitate collaboration is to maximize the chance of calls being successful. Placing excessive restrictions on a confusing call forwarding scheme is not going to help. If our users can make themselves more reachable with a flexible self-service call forwarding deployment, then we can pat ourselves on the back. Can we implement that? Sure we can, and Enterprise 20 did. Whatever we do, it had better be easy to explain to our users. We'll never allow call forwarding to E911. Some users expect to configure forward all, forward busy, and forward no answer destinations themselves. We will allow call forwarding to local numbers in all cases. We will allow call forwarding to long distance numbers if the user has to log in to configure the destination. Remember that our long distance class of service blocks high risk area codes and we need to configure lines differently for different kinds of users. 
Some executives want no restrictions on any calling or forwarding. We give them what they want. You need to be careful with local route groups. If you do nothing, if users forward calls to local 10-digit numbers, then forwarded calls from other sites will likely fail. If users forward calls to local 7-digit numbers, then forwarded calls from other sites will either fail, or worse, callers will be connected to the wrong party. What are we going to tell our users? How do we explain that nonsense? We'll fix this. It's easy. An Enterprise 20 objective for call forwarding. Call forwarding works like users expect. If they can forward a call to a number, then callers will be redirected to that number. No explanation required. Cisco Collaboration has features to use to maximize reachability. We want to use these. Automated Alternate Routing, AAR, Reroute through the PSTN if there is not enough bandwidth to place the call on net. And call forward unregistered, or CFER. Reroute calls to devices that are not registered. These features are easy to deploy, and we deploy them. We show you how to meet these objectives and requirements in our dial plan for call forwarding and voicemail drawing. We look at call forwarding options, call forwarding implementation, AAR and CFER, and a dial plan for voicemail integration. You are roaming when you use a soft phone like Cisco IP Communicator at a different site. You are roaming when you use extension mobility to log into a phone at a different site. You are roaming if you take your phone to a different site and plug it in, or if you use a wireless phone at a different site. You are roaming when you use Mobile Connect, also called Single Number Reach, to ring lines on different phones when people call you. Not everyone calls this roaming, but we do. Does dialing work like at the home site or like at the roaming site? Does 911 still work? Of course it does. Does call forwarding work like at the home site or like at the roaming site? Do speed dials work when users roam? What about Mobile Connect, single number reach? Does it work when you are roaming? What about call lists? Can you still return calls with one-click dialing? How do you want it to work? Enterprise 20 deploys extension mobility profiles, soft phones like CIPC, and wireless phones even normal desktop phones might roam. Should all roaming devices work the same way? Of course they should. We explore mobility for user Chloe Campbells. Chloe works in the Montreal office and has an extension mobility profile she uses with her work phone in Montreal and for roaming. CIPC for roaming, wireless and desktop phones work the same way, and a remote destination profile for single number reach. Do we want Chloe's devices to behave like devices at the Halifax site when she roams there, or like devices at her home Montreal site? Something like this would be a nightmare. How would we explain this to users? What would our end user training look like? How do users exchange numbers at a site where some are roaming and some are not? If users need a table to look up dialing behavior, then we've failed. It's an epic failure. Users can be mobile. If users roam to a site, then all dialing internal and external from speed dials and call lists works just like it does at that site. Call forwarding always works like at the home site, so call forwarding and mobile connect configurations work while users roam. This is easy to explain to users. There are two approaches to class of service, line device or blocking on lines. That's two names for the same thing. 
and line only. We're not really sure what this should be called because it's not really line only. E.164 is a special case we'll look at later. The blocking on lines approach has been discussed extensively in SRNDs up to 9.x. Mostly meets the objectives for our dial plan. Is easier to deploy than E.164. Many enterprises are using this approach. The CUCM GUI has built-in features to support and exploit this approach, such as device mobility and secondary calling search spaces. Learning at Cisco has been teaching this approach in CIPT1 and CIPT2 for years now, and still was when we produced this drawing. The Cisco validated designs don't use the blocking online's approach. At Cisco Live 2014 in San Francisco, famous Cisco dial plan guru Johan Krohn said, line device is dead. Why? We'll do separate designs. We're doing blocking on lines now. We believe this gives us the best possible dial plan for Enterprise 20 objectives and requirements without going all the way to E.164 and a complete E.164 solution. We'll do this after we've upgraded to 10.5 or higher. Features become available at those releases that help with E.164. We discuss alternatives in our drawing, traditional online class of service, and E.164 alternatives. This way you can see exactly what the issues are with each approach. Enterprise 20 dial plan playbooks include a summary of our objectives. We revised these objectives as we worked through the build. The final objectives are the ones presented here. This playbook is continued in Enterprise 20 Dial Plan Build, Dial Plan Build Overview Part 2. Part 2 looks at end user training, comprehensive configuration information, the online solution, and the ABA lab environment. 